Hello everyone, welcome to my session IRSA for non EKS clusters. I am Suraj Narvade. I work as a senior platform engineer at RVU. Outside work, I am a CNCF ambassador and AWS community builder. And I am also a maintainer of two open source projects, which are my pet project as well. Uh, one is AWS CTL and the other one is kubectl EKS, which is uh, AWS CLI and kubectl EKS plugin. Before jumping into the IRSA, let's first understand the problem. Before IRSA and equivalent solutions such as Kiam and Kube2IAM, this was the situation in the Kubernetes on AWS. If App1 wanted to access S3 bucket, we, we used to provide a node role and attach a policy which will grant the permission to the node to access that S3 bucket. Now, in this case, S3 read access was attached to this node role. Now, as a side effect of that, even application 2, uh, the pod which was running on the same node was also able to access the S3 bucket. Now, in this case, app1 was expected and app2 was not expected. Now, in a situation where malicious user gets access to app2, will also be able to access S3 bucket which is not at all expected. To overcome this problem, EKS, come in, EKS team came up with the solution IRSA. What is IRSA? IRSA stands for I am role for service account, which gives fine grained access control over what a particular role will be given to a pod to do a particular API call in the AWS. It eliminates the need of static credential because before this, users were assigning a static credentials to the pod uh, to access a AWS resource, and it also helps with the auditing. This is the simple example of IRSA where a service account uh, is annotated with the role uh, which is which we want to assign to a given pod and a token expiration time. And if you look at a IAM policy, a very simple IAM policy where we are mentioning uh, the OIDC provider, which we will see in the diagram and a which service account as well as the namespace of the service account. Along with that, the main important bit here is assume role with web identity action. Okay. Now let's look at the diagram. Now this diagram is from the EKS cluster. Okay. Now, as we mentioned, the pod wanted to access the S3 bucket. As we mentioned in the IRSA, I am role for service account. So we annotate the service account with the role ARN and we associate that service account with the help of pod. Now, in EKS cluster, as soon as you create this pod, a pod identity webhook, which is sitting inside the control plane, uh, detects this pod and mutates a set of environment variables. Now, these environment variables are understand by or consumed by a AWS SDK, which is utilized in an application in a pod to access the AWS resources. Now, these AWS functions will call AWS API, AWS STS API along with the assume role web identity, which we showed. Now, once after that call, AWS STS verifies the information or the token uh, from the request now this token has also information regarding the service account and the namespace right 
now it verifies that thing with the help from the oidc identity provider which is associated with eks cluster already once the token is verified aws sts issues a temporary security credential to the pod and then it can access the s3 bucket now the diagram we saw till now was from the eks cluster so till now we understood uh, what IRSA is and how we can set it up with the help of service account and the IAM role and how it works in the EKS cluster. But as the title of the session says, the IRSA for non EKS cluster, let's take a look at how we can deploy the same thing in the non EKS cluster, meaning the EC2 based Kubernetes cluster. Now, the webhook which we saw is also known as EKS pod identity webhook. EKS pod identity webhook is an open source project by AWS. The exact same project, the same webhook is used inside the EKS control plane. So we are uh, using the same thing for our non EKS cluster as well. Now, along with deploying this webhook to our cluster we have to do few extra things as well right now if now if you see this diagram everything is same now instead of eks cluster we have a ec2 based kubernetes cluster the webhook remains same which we just saw and the rest process remains same as well but with EKS cluster, OIDC provider was associated, but but with our non EKS EC2 based Kubernetes cluster doesn't have OIDC provider. So what we can do is we can create a S3 bucket and in the S3 bucket, we can upload two files, uh, which we will see what those files are. One of the one of the file is dot well known open ID configuration. And other file is keys.json, which consists of keys. Now, this exact configuration, this uh, the file which we are seeing is the same interface given by OIDC provider as well to verify the token, right? So we are essentially replacing the OIDC provider with the S3 bucket and few files. Now, along with this, we have to ensure that Cube Controller Manager in our non EKS Kubernetes cluster uh, is set up with these two flags cluster signing cert file and cluster signing key file. API server flags are set for service account key file, service account signing key file, API audience, and service account issuer. The Content of the well-known OpenID configuration file looks something like this, which has an issuer, JWKS URI, URI, and few other parameters. Now, if you look at issuer, the URL is S3 region and uh, name of the S3 bucket. And the keys.json file consists of keys, which we set before. Now, we saw what is IRSA, uh, the example of service account and IAM, how it is set up in EKS and how you can set it up in non-EKS cluster as well. But one can ask like, why should we use IRSA over the other open source solution, KIAM or kube 2 iam in non-EKS EC2 based Kubernetes cluster? The reasons are fairly straightforward. It's a native integration provided by AWS. It is very easy to set up, very easy to use, and easy for maintenance as well. Reduce latency. In Kiam or Cube to IAM, uh, there was a added latency because of proxying the request and then processing, and added security as well. I have added few references uh, for this talk. The first link is uh, for the open source 
repository for the project EKS or identity webhook where you can check the YAML manifest to deploy the webhook and also you can if you are interested you can check the source code as well the second link is from the same repo but uh, it is for the self-hosted setup which uh, we just saw the overview for you can follow this guide and set up the IRSA for your non Kubernetes cluster as well. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, do let me know. Thank you.